Amen. So tonight's message is praise God in the midst of the battle. And so, you know, um, your faith must be strong enough to move your mouth before it will move your mountain. That includes praise. So your faith must be strong enough to influence the words that you say, right? Your faith will only rise as high as your confessions are. And so if you have negative confessions, like it'll never work out, or it's always this bad, and I don't see any answers, well, that's where your faith will stay. But if you trust in the promises of God and know that he's God and you're not, and we can, we can trust him for, for uh, miraculous things, then you start to align your words up with the promises of God. And one way to do that is through praise, through praising God. Kenneth Hagin has a wonderful book out, if, you, if anybody's interested in getting it. It's called The Praise Cure, and uh, it's a beautiful book on praise. I think that many Christians, most Christians, um, they miss the area of praise. They don't realize that praise is a powerful weapon. Amen. The Bible says that God has ordained strength through praise. And so um, many, many great things have happened. So they're missing that element of praise. They don't quite understand it. So that's what this message is about. And you can look at it this way. You know, if you go to a golf instructor, they, they'll say there's 21 different um, things you can do wrong in a golf swing. I could swore I found 22, but that's another story. <laughs> I shouldn't confess that, though. I'll keep hitting them in the woods if I keep saying that, right? <laughs> and so, but there's 21 different um, things you can do wrong. And, and, and uh, any golf instructor I've ever heard says this, the number one mistake that amateur golfers make is their alignment. They're not aligned up, they're not lined up right with the ball. If you're not lined up right with the ball, anything can happen, right? And so I can just compare that to what I'm saying this evening. The number one mistake that believers... Bible-believing faith believers make is that they're not praising God in the right way. And, and I'll, I'll share with you what I mean by that. And so, but you know, we can't let our worries live in our mind uh, rent-free. You got to evict them with uh, praise continually coming off of your lips, right? You might be surprised what all you let, let in your mind over and over and over again. No wonder people are sad. No wonder people are uh, worry, have a lot of worry. No wonder people are in such fear. It's because they're rehearsing it over and over again. And I think sometimes they don't even realize that they're doing it. Unless you hear a message like this tonight, and uh, it, can, it can literally change your life. If you, if you come to church and you have an open heart and you say, God, I need to hear something from you, you'll get something. You'll get something because it goes beyond me or, or even you. It goes to the power of the Holy Ghost, Right? And uh, Jesus just said, you got to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And so, but the Psalms in the Bible, you know, they are songs of praise. The Psalms are songs of praise, and also they're, they're poems of praise. And so what the Psalms are for, they were sung in the Old Testament. And so you can pick a Psalm out, and, and you can, you can um, speak it, but you can also sing it, too. And, and it's ready-made praise right there for you. Ready-made, Word of God, anointed praise. Just pick a Psalms out, read in there, and, and, and it'll touch your heart. It'll lift you up. And then that's your song for the day. And you just sing those Psalms and you just praise God. Sometimes I'll, I'll just, you know, um, say, God, what, where, where do you want me to go? And he's usually taking me into Psalms. And um, the other night he took me into Psalms 92. Everybody knows Psalms 91. But do you know Psalms 92? That's pretty good, too. And so it really ministered to me. And so that's what this message is about. You know that the walls of Jericho came down when they gave a big shout and blew the trumpets, right? There had to be a shout before the walls came down. And the Bible talks about Paul and Silas were in prison in the dungeon. They weren't just in the prison. They were in the dungeon. They were in, in, in the pit of the prison and chained, chained there against the wall for something that they were innocent of. Don't you know, if anybody had a right to be down and out, it would have been them guys. If anybody had a right to be saying, woe was me, and, and if it weren't for, for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all, and, and we're just doomed, those guys didn't take that attitude. 
they praised God so loud that the other prisoners heard them. That's what the Bible says. And what happened when they praised God? The whole place shook. And what happened to those chains? They were broken. Amen. And they were set free. And then what did they do? The jailer was so distraught because if he loses a prisoner, it cost him his life. He was going to kill himself. And they said, oh, don't do that. We're all here. And they got him saved. I mean, that's a good deal, right? <laughs> but it was the praise and it was the worship to God, even in that terrible situation. I mean, you know, the Bible requires a lot of imagination. So you can imagine what that dungeon looked like. It wasn't the Hilton Hotel, right? It wasn't the Ritz. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't anything but being chained down in a dark dungeon. And you got to know there was probably rats down there trying to nibble their toes or whatever. I don't know. That's, that would top it all off, right? <laughs> and so, but they got so involved with what was truly in them, which was praise. Amen. You know, you can tell what's truly in a person when, when they experience disappointment or they experience tough times. That's when the true measure of a man or a true measure of a woman will come out. And a man or woman is filled with the Holy Ghost and full of courage and love for God. It's going to come out no matter what situation they're in. They're going to come out praising God. And they're going to come out on top if they do that. And so um, I wanted to read to you a, a story. This came from the book, The Praise Cure, that uh, Brother Hagen had told. And so let me just say that my dad is my, uh, is my number one first teacher. But then Brother Hagen would be my second teacher by the time brother Hagen got me I was 35 years old and all the teaching of my dad's had already been in me but he he really also enlightened me and um but it goes like this an old Presbyterian elder believed you ought to be quiet about serving God sort of like you were attending a funeral his daughter would get blessed during the service and she would shout he would try to get his daughter to quiet down. She would get quiet for a while, and then she would get blessed, and she would start shouting again. This older gentleman finally lived, lived out his life, and it came time for him to go to heaven. He was just about to pass over, and God gave him a little glimpse of the glory world, and he got to shouting. Everybody was astounded. And he said, run and get my daughter real quick. I want her to shout with me all the way to glory. So she came. And though the tears were running down her face because her daddy was going home and, and she would feel the personal loss, she stood by the bedside and both of them just shouted, shouted and praised God all the way until he got home with Jesus. Amen. And so when he caught a glimpse of glory, he, he said, I, I, I want to get my daughter because she was right. And I want, her to, I want her to shout with me. And so church is to be a place of joy. It is to be a place of, of release of what's going on in you. Sometimes you just got to say amen. All amen means is so be it. Amen. Sometimes you got to say, it's okay to say glory to God or praise God. It's okay to be vocal in in the church or whatever situation you're in heaven is is a noisy place people say i like quiet well then you got to rethink that because when you get to heaven it's going to be loud and they're going to be singing and they're going to be praising and they're going to be worshiping god so you got to get over yourself right and say you know what let me just enjoy the things that god wants me to enjoy Look at Psalms 100, verse 1. This is King James Version. And we'll just see, this is another one of those psalms. We'll just see the beautiful, elegant poetry of the psalms. You know, if you have the Bible app on your phone, you could put the psalms on. And you can let her play all night long. And you might say, well, I'll be sleeping. Yeah, but your spirit never sleeps. Your spirit will be having a, a Holy Ghost um, service while you're sleeping, right? You'll be feeding your spirit, 
and, and getting filled up in there. And then when you wake up in the middle of the night, if you have to go to the bathroom, you'll get a little extra too for your mind, right? You know, um, if you go to Rama's campus, Rama has the Word of God everywhere. In the hallways, you can hear Brother Hagen preaching. You go to the bookstore, you can hear him preaching. If, if you go um, eh, just, just anywhere, he's, he's always on that campus. They just fill the airways with the Word of God. And so, in Psalms 101, it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. So it's setting something up here, right? We serve the Lord with gladness. I would bet you there's a lot of Christians that could swear that that said serve the Lord with sadness. <laughs> They're probably like, wait a minute, I thought it was sadness. I thought I got to put on a sour face and sackcloth and ashes and just walk around. Whoa, is me. That's not what I see in the Bible. You know Why? We got to let what's on the inside of us truly get on the outside so people want what we got. If I'm walking around with my head down and, and, and sorrowful all the time, ain't nobody wants anything that I got to offer. Right? They're going to be like, I don't know who that guy's God is, but I'm out. If, if that's the way he is. No, let your light shine. And so it says, serve the Lord with what? Gladness. How do you do that? You come before his presence singing. You might say, well, I don't know any songs. Well, now you do because the Psalms is songs, right? And you can, you start praising God, you might make up your own song. Or it might come out of your spirit, right? A lot of good songs. If you get, if you get skilled enough of spending time in the presence of God and even praying in the spirit, you'll start singing. You'll sing in the spirit. You'll sing in the spirit and, you'll, and then you'll sing in English. And beautiful, beautiful songs. Fresh from the Holy Ghost with inside you, Right? And so here's the, here's the steps that we're to take as, as we go before the Lord um, with gladness and singing. Verse 3, it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Let me just stop there. That's pretty important. Sometimes you've got to stop and say, okay, he's God. If he's God, he's creator of every living thing. He's all-powerful, all-knowing, and omnipresent. He's the God that said, let there be light, and light was. He's the God that spoke the galaxies into existence, and they're still expanding today. He's that God, right? you got to realize that he, he is bigger than, than anything we can even comprehend. But we can comprehend a lot if we get into the Spirit, but he's still beyond our comprehension, right? It is he that made us, and not we ourselves. Someone says, well, how did you get on the earth? Well, I made myself. No, you didn't. You didn't make yourself. You came out of your mother's womb. Right? You weren't making nothing. You were crying. <laughs> when they spanked your bottom, you started crying. You weren't making nothing. Right? <laughs> and so, he made us. He formed you. God formed you in your mother's womb. Amen? That's love. Think this all, think this, know this about God. Because it'll help your praise life. He doesn't just have love. He is love. That's his character. That's his nature. So his love for you will not change by something that you do or you don't do. He loves you because he is love. Amen. And, and he is a love God. And every one of you here tonight, you are a love story. The Bible is God's autobiography. It's a book about a God who loves me and a God who loves you. Amen. What does love do? The first thing love always does is gives. What did God give? He gave Jesus. He gave his only begotten son, the sin, the spotless lamb of God. He gave him up so that we might have life. We can praise God for that all day long. Right? So sometimes people say, oh, I don't have anything to praise God for. Well, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. And once you get past that part about he gave Jesus for you, then you can start thanking him for the air that you breathe. Because it's his air. You can thank him for the ground that you walk on because that's his ground. You can thank him for the talent that he gave you to make a living and, and to make a lot of money or do whatever because you didn't get that ability on your own. God gave it to you. You can start, you can get the list going, right? So we come before the Lord with gladness, not sadness. 
That doesn't mean that we're not going to have sad times. Did I say that? Let's keep it down the middle of the road now. Somebody might have been thinking that because I just stopped on that. Who was thinking that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're going to have sad times. But what are you supposed to do in sad times? Come to the Lord with gladness. Right? In the middle of the sadness, come to the Lord with gladness. And praise his name and remember that he is God. And that will help you tremendously. We are his people and we are the sheep of his pasture. See how personal and intimate the word of God is? No wonder David was the apple of God's eye. Amen. Amen. He had, a, he had a, a glimpse of God and a revelation of God that very few people in that day had. But he had it. And then look at verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. I know some people, they say, I could have swore that said enter his gates with uh, murmuring and complainings. Well, that's a different Bible. It's the wrong Bible, right? Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving. What are you thankful for? Well, everything we just read in verse 3, right? That's what you're thankful for. And into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. That's how we are, we are to approach our Heavenly Father, right? You know, the Bible says, be thankful in all circumstances. I could have used that verse tonight, but I'm bringing it up now. The Bible says, be thankful in all circumstances. It doesn't say, be thankful to God for. Amen? God, God does not do the killing, stealing, and destroying. But what he's saying is, in whatever circumstance you find yourself in this life, don't let it take your thankfulness to God. Don't let it steal your praise. Don't let it keep you from coming to God with gladness and with a song in your heart. Because if the devil takes your song, he takes your joy. Amen. And so to, to do what I'm telling you to do tonight through this sermon, you're going to have to have a will to do it. Because it's hard when you've had a bad day to praise God sometimes. It's hard when it seems like people are betraying you and people are hurting you and people don't care. It's hard to, um, to sift through those emotions. But you've got to remember that God isn't those people. God's not doing that to you. God's the same today, yesterday, and forever. He's the same God that, that sent Jesus for you 2,000 years ago, and he is for you, not against you. Amen? And so you've got to rise out of that situation and don't let it beat you down. There was a missionary woman uh, to China. I think it was Lillian B. Yeomans was her name. Um, she had uh, smallpox. Now, back in, this is back in the day that smallpox was killing people. And, um, and she's very sick. She's in the bed, just can't for, for weeks upon weeks. And then one night they heard her praising God so loud. How many times do you think the Bible talks about getting loud? Right? Got to get loud sometimes. Right? I mean, I, I, I'll just throw that. I won't even charge you anything extra for that little bit of information. You got to get loud. Right? I'm, I'm about as quiet as they come. But when the Holy Spirit gets on me and I, and I get to preaching, I'll get as loud as the rest of them. Right? Because you got to, we have something to be loud about. Amen? Amen? We got we to shout to the world that, that you all can do what you want to do. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. You got to shout to the devil. I have not been given a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. You got to shout it out sometimes. When I, when I went to Rama and um, after I got the kids on the bus, I was at an uh, uh, apartment complex, Quail Hollow. And, uh, I mean, the devil started hitting me in ways that, that he had never hit me before. He started giving me, like, worry and panic um, things about um, becoming a pastor. And uh, he, uh, he was trying to fill my head with all kinds of things. You're not going to be able to do it. You're going to go back there in that church that your dad worked so hard for. You're going to run it into the ground. Well, it's been 21 years and the Holy Spirit kept things going. Amen. I've just been along for the ride. But I mean, he, if you listen long enough, he'll tell you plenty of lies. And if he says, oh, they're still listening. I'll tell them some more lies. When are you going to say, I'm done listening to you, devil? And I'm going to praise God because I know one thing, one thing that I know for sure. My God loves me. 
He loves me with a love that's greater than anything this world could ever offer. He loves me, and, and he put his money where his mouth is when he sent his son to die for me. He loves me. Amen? And so, but I would get these things, and it would just come on me in, in ways that I had never felt before. And I would just lay on my um, apartment floor, and I would just pray in the Spirit. And I'd, you know, I'd pray in English, pray in the Spirit, until I felt that, that, that heaviness get off of me. And uh, um, when it got off of me, I stood up, and I would shout. And, and my neighbors, the neighbors lived upstairs, they were deaf. Literally. They couldn't hear, so I didn't have to worry about them. And so I don't know about the people beside me, <laughs> but... I would shout, I have not been given a spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. I have not been given a spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption, whereby I cry, Abba, Father. I know those verses very well. And then I'd walk around the reservoir, and I would say that and speak that over and over again and get that devil out of my head. Amen? Amen. It's the same for me. It's the same for you. We all have to go through the same steps because this is instructions from the word of God. But you had to have a you have to have a desire to do it. See, back then, God really, really spoke to me in my heart at Wolf Avenue, single parent with four children. You know, my life was was getting the kids up, getting them the magic ears or wherever they were going, working hard all day, coming home, bringing them home and 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 making supper. Now, it wasn't a 10-course meal. It was macaroni and cheese or something, but I still made it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Making supper, trying to keep up with laundry, and doing it all over again. You know, just being faithful, and, and, and it just felt like, you know, the world just, just, just ran over me, because the world will run over you. The world is not full of love. And, and so... But one day when I called out to God, and, and like our sister was singing, I surrendered. I truly surrendered. It wasn't when I got born again. I got born again when I was a kid. But when I truly surrendered, I was 30, 33 years old, somewhere around there. And I surrendered, and God came to where I was. And he lifted me up. But the thing I want to tell you that when, when he came into my heart, he came into my, 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 my spirit that strong and then when I was praying, you know, maybe about a year later about his direction for my life, because I just felt like he had, a, he had something different for me. I didn't know it was going to be a pastor. I had no clue. I mean, <laughs> so I started praying, and he put that in me. It's as, live, it's as live in me today as it was back then. I feel it just as strong today as I did back then. And, and he told me the whole thing. You want to hear what he said? He said, you're going to go to Ramah. You're going to learn to be a pastor, and you're going to come back and be pastor of that church. I said, okay. I didn't feel like no pastor. If you, if you take a list of things that you'd like to do in your life, that probably wouldn't even been on the list. Anything that had to deal with speaking in front of people, it was out. But that's what happened when you walk so far away from God, you, you don't even realize who it is he created you to be. Amen. But what I'm saying is that he put that passion, that desire in me so that when I when I went to Rama and, and I was fighting those that oppressiveness of the devil, I had the fire and the will to win. I had the fire. I was not laying down. I had already a lifetime built in me of faith of, of, of from my dad's teaching, who I think is one of the best faith teachers that there is. I already had that built in me. I just had to have a connection. Never had any fire. Without a purpose, I had no, no vision. And without a vision, I had no passion. I just was there. But when he gave me all three of those things at one time, I, I, I was willing to fight. But you got to fight God's way, right? Not man's way. It's a spiritual battle. And so I've been fighting for 21 years. Anytime the devil comes in, I'll fight. I'll fight that battle. I'll get on my knees. I'll praise my God. I'll worship him. And, and, and I'll, I'll just resist the devil. And he always flees, right? And so this woman had, um, 
smallpox. And they heard her praising God. And they said, how can you be praising God at a time like this? She's bedridden. And she said, God gave me a vision of an angel with baskets. The basket was full and running over. The basket that was full and running over was labeled testings. She was certainly being tested by Satan, not God. When I mention that word testings, I always got to stop and, and put a qualifier in there. God does not test or tempt anyone. Amen. That would be the devil. Right. And so there was a big basket there and it was full of all the testings and trials and tribulations that she was undergoing by the devil. And she said on the other side, there was a basket that had praise written on it. It just had a few praises on the bottom of it. What the Spirit was telling her was that she was going to have to keep singing and praising until she fills that basket. She got to fill the praise basket. And so she praised all night long. Every symptom disappeared. God showed her the basket marked praise and it was overflowing and outweighed the other basket. You got to fill your basket of, of praise up, right? You got to fill that basket. And if you wait till you feel like praising, you're not going to do it. Right? If you say, well, wait a minute, let me, let me get Fox News in here first, and then I'll praise. Nothing against Fox News, because I watch Fox News, but no, you got to have priorities. If you're getting beaten up every day, the first thing you need to do is, is to praise God. And that news is they're trying to depress you. They're trying to put fear in you. They're trying to just cause all this, this chaotic stuff in you and suspense. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? Trump and Kamala and Democrats and Republicans. They try to put that stuff in you. And before you know it, you got the wrong momentum going. And you go out of the house or wherever you're doing it and... and and you, not one word of praise to God. If you start off with the praise first, you might not even, you might say, you know what, I don't think I need that news today. I don't think I need to listen to that today. Amen. You know why? Don't worry about the elections anyway. It's all in God's hands. Amen. And God always takes care of his people. So you can praise and shout and sing yourself into victory. You might say, well, I can't sing. Well, I can't either. But God doesn't care. He's not judging me on the quality of my singing. He's judging on the quality of my heart. Amen. Look at Psalms 34, 1. And so I'll say, you know, this for, for people in the church, that if you're going to really get the full experience of this church, the full experience of what God has for you here, you know, during the praise and worship, I would encourage you to sing with the song. Amen. You can't say, well, I don't know the song. What do you mean? It's right up there. Real slow. Boom, boom, boom. You can read the words, right? I ain't saying you got to stand up and be a songbird louder than everybody else. But if you really want, now this is coming from your pastor. And so if you really want the full experience, because as soon as you walk through those doors, the Holy Spirit is, is ministering to you. Amen. And if you just start singing the song, just sing loud enough that you can hear yourself. Right. I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says use sign language the whole way through. Or think your way through. No, it's 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 get that word coming out. Right. Ask the Lord to help you. Pray and ask the Lord to say, say Lord, because you're allowed to ask the Lord about anything that I say. And then you're allowed to come and challenge me with the word of God. I hope you do if there's ever something. But you can ask the Lord first if what I'm saying is correct. And I, I, you should ask him, but I'm telling you right now, I know I'm right. <laughs> so I know I'm right. It just doesn't make sense, does it? Come to church where everybody else is singing. You sit there. And you listen. That's a start. Now get the words going. You know why? These songs are faith-filled words. 
We don't sing songs that don't have meaning. And it'll condition your heart and renew your mind. And then you'll get in what's called the spirit of praise. And the anointing will come on you. This is what the body of Christ is for. We sing together. We worship together. We listen to the word together. We serve together. Sometimes when we get uh, new people, and, and they, lots, sometimes they say, well, they're really good faith people. And they've even preached in some big churches and things. And, and they come in and they say, well, I want to preach at your church. And I say, well, go ahead and go in there and love the people and we'll see how you do. And the first thing I ask them, where's your covering? Who's your covering? Who's, who, who did you come out from? If they say, I don't have a covering, I'm pretty much on my own. It's a long shot. I'm just telling you, it's a long shot that they're going to preach. Because that means somewhere along the line, they lone rangered it. You know? And, and uh, don't get me started, but anyway. But, I'll, you know, Sunday morning we had the full aisles. I walked down the aisle, and I'll just let you know a little secret. I don't think it's wrong of me. But if I know they're in, they're in the service there, I'll walk down and I'll just peek over. And when we're singing, I'll see if they're singing. You know what they're doing most of the time? Sitting there reading the Bible. Well, I believe in reading the Bible. But when you're in the house of God and they're singing... Put the Bible down. Put it down. Relax. And sing. Because what is in them to want to do something counter? What is it? What's in there? It's not of the Lord. I'm not saying they're of the devil. I'm just saying it's, it's some kind of flesh driving them. And, and I can sniff that stuff out a mile away. And I'm like a bloodhound. Not to criticize people, but I, I am the protector of the sheep. Amen. And so I'm not the only protector. There's other pastors and other elders and leaders of the church that are protectors, too. But um, I take it I take it seriously. Okay, I don't know how I got off on that, but I burned up all my time. Let me go. Look at Psalms 34, 1. It says, bless the Lord sometimes. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. All the time. For those listening in there, I was kidding. All the times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That says a lot. If you want to really, really pick one verse to, to meditate on, just one verse, one verse. Read that a hundred times till you come back next Wednesday and meditate on it and pray on it, and you're going to get more and more understanding of what that's saying, even beyond what's going on here in the teaching because the Word of God is layered like that. It's like peeling an onion, and the measure of attention and, and um, heart that you put into the word is what's going to be measured back to you. I feel, I feel like picking on things tonight. I don't know why, but, you know, sometimes people have, have you know, I could read the book in a year and I got this stuff. And I don't, if you do that, I don't even know. So go ahead and keep doing it. I'm just saying. But I'm thinking, you got to read pretty quick to get those verses in. That's a lot of verses, right? And how many times are you speed reading? Come on now. How many times are you skim, skim reading? Can you really concentrate on what you're reading if you're trying to get so much done? Isn't it better just to meditate on the word because meditation brings revelation? And sometimes people say, well, I don't like to read. Well, that ain't reading. That's meditating. Or sometimes people say, well, I don't understand the Bible. I can understand that, but there's different versions you can understand. But that ain't hard. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Continually in my mouth. Not his praise will stop when I get to the church and everybody else is singing. Right? I'm picking. I know I am, but hey, don't get mad at me. I don't, I'm not thinking of anybody. It's just the Holy Spirit telling me, right? And you know what? I, sing clear, I sit clear up front. And so... The only time I look sometimes when I'm coming down, but I don't look for you guys, so don't worry about it. You work it out between you and the Lord, right? 
I'm clean up here. I ain't got a clue. But I'm trying to help you, right? And you know why? I understand you if, I, if I'm talking to you, because I was you. That's why I feel I have a little bit of a, a leeway to be pick on you a little bit, because <laughs> I was you and I love you, and, and you're looking at it wrong. Amen? So, bless the Lord at all times. That means when times aren't going good, you bless him. You praise him even in the bad times, even in the sorrowful times. You start praising him, you start worshiping him, and you'll be surprised the, the, the strength that comes out of you. Because like I said, the Bible says God ordained strength through praise. That means when you praise him, strength becomes yours. Not natural strength that you can bench press 200 pounds. Supernatural strength, supernatural courage, supernatural wisdom, supernatural faith, supernatural joy. Supernatural peace, but you got to break the barrier and start praising your God because that's what the devil's been after all along. He's after your praise because he wants your praise. How can the devil get your praise? Go ahead and start speaking doubt and unbelief and go ahead and tell people how big your problem is and how small your God is because it seems like that when you, when you brag up, not brag up, but when you, bring, you, you talk about your problem so much, you're praising the devil. He's like, that's right. That's my work. That's my work. Keep it up. I ain't praising the devil. He'll never get my tongue. He'll never get my tongue. He'll never get my words because my lips were created for praise. Amen. In all circumstances. Is he going to get your words? Now... Brother Hagen said this, he said, I've always done most of my praying when everything is going wrong. Most of my praising when everything is going wrong. He said, when nothing looked right, that's when I get loud and noisy. I started off that way. When I got saved, I was on a deathbed. I had two strikes against me to begin with. I believe he had three incurable heart diseases as a young child. My back was up against the wall. So really, that's when I get the most rambunctious. Most of the times when things are not going right, I get off by myself behind a building somewhere and just dance a jig for joy. Amen. See, I don't know how to dance a jig. Oh, yeah, you will. You start getting the joy. You'll, you'll get them feet a moving. Right? <laughs> I have my biggest times. Why? Because, bless God, I know the way to victory. I know the way. Oh, my heart and my mind and my flesh and the circumstances and those around me, they don't want to praise. They want to they have a pity party. They want to just get sunk down in the, in the gloom, despair, and agony that's on them. Like the old Hee Haw song. Right? They might have watched that too much when they were younger, you know? And so everything natural says be in a hole, be in a rut, go ahead and rehearse everything that's happening. What if you go outside behind the house and just start dancing a jig for the Lord? That's Brother Hagin's terminology. He was an older fella. You might say, go ahead and start break dancing if you know how to break dance. I don't know. I ain't trying that. I know that. <laughs> right? Go ahead and, and, and get happy. You know, what you, you know what you do when you get happy in the middle of the storms? You're saying, devil, this joy that I have, you didn't give it to me. You can't take it away. I'll show you power, devil. I'll show you the greater one that does live in me. This is where true power comes out. If you can overcome this battle, you can overcome all battles. Overcome those emotions, overcome those fears, overcome those, those things uh, of just, just try to bring you down. I know what that's like. If you go through that, I know what it's like because I lived there for a long time. I, I, uh, there was a time in my life I felt like I was in this little prison of just no happiness, no joy, nothing. It wasn't God's will for my life. I did it to myself. And I let the devil just, just pounce on me. 
and control my emotions. And then when I started getting happy in the Lord, one day I laughed and I stopped. It startled me. You know why? I didn't even know what my laugh sounded like. It was like weird to me. Oh, that's what I sound like. And you know what? I liked it. It's good to laugh, right? It's good medicine for you. Look at Psalms um, 103.1. We're going through the Psalms this evening. Everything I'm saying, I'm backing up with Scripture, right? If I ever get up here and, and talk for this long a time and you say, Pastor, you didn't back anything up with Scripture, you tell me about myself. But I don't think that's going to happen. Because I've been trained in the Scriptures, right? Psalm 103, 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. You know what a lot of people do? They forget his benefits. They forget his benefits. So he's saying, while you're blessing the Lord, don't forget all the benefits. And he lists the benefits. Look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Well, glory, hallelujah for that one. We can just stay, we can close up right now. That's good. He forgave all of your sin. He wiped the slate clean. Gave you a new life and said, I don't care what happened in the past. You don't belong to the devil anymore. You're mine. And I am for you and not against you. Man, that, that's, that's a benefit, right? Who forgiveth all thy iniquities and healeth all thy diseases well look at that who redeemeth thy life from destruction and crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfieth my mouth with good things i like this last part really a lot so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles someone when i sometimes when i start to feel older than what i am i'll bring that verse out God, you renew my youth like the wings of the eagles. Amen? And I start praising him for that. Now I'm going to end with, the prayer, with not a prayer, but a, um, another story that Brother Hagin tells. He said in the 1930s, now we're going back a while, there was a minister who was healed of tuberculosis. Before the miracle drugs, it was the number one killer in the United States was tuberculosis. This minister was 20 years old, and he had a wife and a baby. But he had to move in with her parents. They were farmers in Texas. He was bedridden because of this tuberculosis. And he's a minister, too. One day, his wife and mother were out back washing clothes on an old rub board. Anybody ever use them, an old rub board? I've seen them before, but I never used them. I'm glad I wasn't in that era. I like to just push the buttons and... Right. The father-in-law was on the other side of the farm plowing with mules. He could look out his window and see this guy could look out his window and see a clump of trees about a quarter of a mile away. And he said, Lord, give me enough strength to get to those trees. I will get out there and pray. Either I will get healed or they'll find my body. He made it crawling. The last bit of the way, he barely made it, crawling on his knees to get out there. He had no strength, couldn't breathe, nothing. He rolled over on his back in those clumps of trees and stared up at the clouds. He just laid there. Every bit of his strength used to get out to those clump of trees. And the devil said to him, Now did the devil come with horns and a pitchfork and smoke coming out of his nose? He came through his thoughts, right? He came in his thoughts and he says, You've really done it now, boy. You're way out here by yourself. No one knows you're here. You can't yell loud enough for anyone to hear you. You will die, and the buzzers will lead, lead them to you. And this, this man said, that's all right, devil. That's what I said I was going to do anyway. I was going to come out here, and, and whatever happened would happen. So waiting to get a little more strength to start praying this man began to think, and he, he thought this way. He said, I've been prayed for by many people for over two years. I've been prayed for. He, says, I, he said, I've had thousands of prayers for me. He said, if it was prayer 
that was going to do it, then it would have already done it. He said, I've been to Raymond T. Ritchie's healing line, Smith Wigglesworth's healing line, Amy Simple McPherson's healing line, Dr. Charles S. Price's healing line, and P.C. Nelson's healing line. They were the five main world-renowned healing ministries of the day. He was in every one of them. He said, Lord, I'm not going to pray for my healing. I'm going to lay on my back and praise you for my healing. See, he already had the prayer. Prayer and praise. Prayer and praise. How about prayer and praise and then praise, 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 praise. <laughs> right? Prayers of praise. And so he said, I'm going to lay on my back and praise you for my healing. And the Holy Spirit led him into that praise cure. He says, I'll either get healed or they'll find me dead. But I'm going to praise you with the strength that I have. And it started out with a whisper. He could barely even get anything out, just a whisper. And he said, Lord, all these great men of faith laid hands on me according to the word of God. I know that I'm healed. And after about a little more than two and a half hours of praising God, he stood up on his feet, completely healed. And he was praising God so loud that people heard him two miles away. The praise cure. Amen. We can all praise God like that, can't we? You, you know, that's, that's a beautiful gift. Because when you're praising God, you're praising, you're praising truth. You're praising life. You're praising the giver of life. You're, you're breaking the bonds of chains off of you just like Paul and Silas in the dungeon. Right? You're, you're shouting at the walls of Jericho and blowing the trumpet and the walls are coming down. You're praising your way to victory. And you know what? It's fun to praise. You can jam out in your car everywhere you go. If you're still listening to ACDC, get them out. Or Black Sabbath. Hope nobody in here. I don't know why I thought of those names, but I don't listen to those people. They just came up in my head. Metallica, or even a country singer that don't sing good lyrics. I like country music. But you know that old saying, what, what do you get when you play a country music record backward? Get your wife back, you get your car back, you get your dog back, you get your house back. If you're out there listening, just another tear in my beer. Yeah, another tear in my beer. Well, you're getting all sorrowful and sappy. That stuff belongs at the bar room. You're not at the bar room. You're a child of God. Better not go to the bar room. I'll drag you out of there. Say, come on, let's start praising God. Right? I mean, turn the music up if you like it loud. Leslie likes it louder than me. Sometimes she, she puts it on there, and I, I get in the car, and I didn't know she had, she had it before me, and I turn it on, and it's like... It blows me out. <laughs> Is that happen? Oh, I see some fingers. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I appreciate the praise, but I'm going to turn it down a notch because my ears here. <laughs> you know, I see all these other people out there in the world praising their devil, Amen. praising their God, their devil. I pull up the sheets and somebody pulls in beside me and they don't even turn the music off. Can't stand that. And all it is is thump, 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 yeah. thump, 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 thump. I'm, like, I'm trying to turn mine up louder. I'll praise my God if you're going to be, I don't know what that music is. Dump, 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 dump. It's some kind of, I don't know what it is. Or this bad lyrics, cursing every other word. They're not ashamed. Hey, I'll, they, if they look at me, I'll say, hey, I'm praising God. My God, you praise your God. Well, it's equal. Right? Because you have a right to praise God too. That's all I have. Would you rise, please? Thank you for coming. So keep praying for these elections coming up. Pray, 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 pray. Um, come against any kind of stealing or any kind of theft. 
I think every one of us can live with a, a, an election that's fair. And if it would go the wrong way, we would just say, which is not, we would just say, well, you know what? This country needs a lot of prayer. But if it's stolen, our sacred right to vote, we, it's not going to happen. The Bible says if you catch the thief in action, he's got to repay you seven times out of his kingdom. He's been caught. That thief has been caught. And so he has to repay out of his kingdom. And so everywhere they set a trap, they're going to fall into it. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, that we are your children. I thank you, Lord God, that we're going to be people of praise. We're not going to stay silent. We're going to praise you in the morning. We're going to praise you in the middle of the day. We're going to praise you in the nighttime. We're just going to praise and worship you. And as we do, Lord God, you will supernaturally transform the way we think. You'll supernaturally bring from the depths of our spirit a joy unspeakable and full of glory and the peace of God that passes all understanding. And most importantly, Lord, the, the love of God that's been shed abroad in our heart will supernaturally Rise up to the surface, Lord God, and, and be expressed through our, our deeds and our, and our words and, and all that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.